Hello all, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafter here. Um, I've just finished stitching out my first ever digitised design. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, basically I took a mandala design that I previously created and shared on my blog, gentlemancrafter.com, and I converted it into a digital embroidery file that I then um, stitched out on my brother embroidery machine. Now I've digitized it in the Hatch embroidery software that I'm still learning, so I thought it'd be a great idea to share that process with you so you can see how easy that software is to use and also how quickly I put this to get, um, design together. So if you've got that software and you've got any of my, uh, my dollars, you could actually be putting together your own digitized designs as well. Okay, so without further ado, here's that video. So here we are in the Hatch Embroidery Digitizer software. So this is the um, top of the range software. And the reason that I wanted to use this was for the auto digitizing features. Because I have my machine already set up, then uh, it's already um, chosen in the drop down menus, but you can obviously change this to your machine. I've also selected the auto fabric to be um, pure cotton with two layers of tearaway stabilizer. That will help the software figure out how many stitches to put in and what tension and, and all that sort of stuff. So I now want to digitize the design. So I'm going to choose the option auto digitize embroidery. And I'm going to go through that process. It's almost like the software is tracing that image out and creating shapes from it. Now it will try and automatically fill um, various elements of the design, but I want it to omit doing any of that and just leave me with the blank canvas template. I'll zoom in a bit more so I can see what I'm doing and so you can see what I'm doing. From the auto digitize um, tab, I'm choosing click to fill. Whenever I move my mouse now over a shape, you'll see that there's a black cross hatch and that shows the shape that it's gonna fill. A single left click fills it with stitching. So I'm going to go around and fill out some areas that I want to stitch. Okay, those are some of the elements that I want to stitch. So I'm going to go to my sequence tab, choose all of those that I've already filled by clicking on the square currently in white thread which is why you can't see it in the square but if I change this now to one of my particular threads something I've got in my stash you can now see that design clearly in the sequence tab the next thing that I'd like to do is in the object properties is change the stitch type and that again is as simple as a single click and the software then works out all of the different stitches where to put it all of the connectors and everything else that goes into it. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on now filling in more of the design. So I go back to my click to fill option and start working on some of the other shapes that are in the design. This mandala is one that I've designed myself, um, but obviously this could work with any um, line design that you've got in your stash. Same process as before, so I select all of those shapes by clicking on the relevant square in the sequence tab. Choose the thread color from the thread chart. That will then change that color. And then from the object properties, I will choose the stitch type. I'm gonna stick with the ripple quite like this. It gives a very unique look when it's stitched out. Okay, just a little bit more filling next, I think. I'm not going to do the whole design that you can see there. I just wanted to pick out some elements. OK, 
icon as before, select all of the shapes in the sequence tab, and then select the stitch type from the object properties. Now I think I'd like to add a border around that last set of shapes. So I shall uh, change the thread colour first, I think, because I want it to be, again, something I've already got in my stash. Now to outline, again, simple as um, the click to fill, this is click to outline. So all this would do is put um, stitching around the shape that you select. It won't fill it in, it will just add a border. And you can't see much at the moment because I'm using a white against a very light blue. But in my sequence tab, again, I can choose the um, last set of things that I've done choose a colour and this time I'm choosing it from the bottom palette and it's one of the ones I've already got in the design. There we go, okay so I think I'll now hide the artwork so I can see what the design looks like just in stitches and I'll hit the play button on the player so I can see how it will stitch out and potentially work out if there's going to be any particular problems. So far so good though. I did notice, however, some of these are filling from the centre and some of them uh, are filling from the outside. Not sure if that's an issue. But I assume there's a reason for it. OK, so I'm going to save this design now. I'm going to save it in various different formats. First, I'm saving it in the um, Wilcom format, which is for the Hatch Embroidery software. That means I can come back to it at any point and start redeveloping it or recolouring it or doing whatever I fancy with it, really. Then I'm saving um, the PES file, which is the stitching file. Then a PNG image of it in case I want to sort of share it or, or have a preview in a folder where PES files are not readable. And then the last option is to print out a reference sheet so I can maybe even create myself a little book of designs to show what colours it uses, the um, colour sequence and so on and so forth. I think it's a very good um, way of being able to share your designs as well. So you can print that directly to your printer or if you've got the ability, I tend to print mine as a PDF document and then I can share that digitally. Right, so I transferred that over to my embroidery machine and I'm now stitching it out. I did speed this up for you because obviously it took around 20 minutes in all to stitch out. I'm using a very large hoop and a lot of stitches, so we're going to start going much faster now. The um, order, obviously, in which it stitches is set in the software, but you can change that in the sequence tab. What I did notice as it was stitching was the connectors, the sort of threads that join each shape together. Now, some machines do have the auto cut feature. Mine doesn't. Generally, it kind of gets to the end of the shape group fit. So that's either something I would need to change in the software or potentially think about when I'm digitizing. Overall, though, I mean, it's just a few threads to snip. So it depends if it bothers you, if you come around to use this software. OK, we're almost there more of those borders to go and then it will have finished and this is what it looked like when it had finished stitching as you can see all the connectors are still there so I snip those all out and there I have my 
first ever fully digitized design based on an original mandala. And I love the ripple stitching and I think it's fantastic how the software works out how that all goes together. The spiral on the circle was just brilliant. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it and will consider having a look at that Hatch software for yourself. And of course, having a look at my blog if you don't already, it's gentlemancrafter.com. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to give it a like, a thumbs up. And of course, if you would like to see more from me, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter, please remember to hit the subscribe button. I say hit, you could just click it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you again another time.